Hello class, let's get started with the notes today. We're going to do universal gravitation. So we're going to actually talk about what gravity actually is as opposed to just talking about what gravity does, which is what we've done all year. So number one, what's up with Newton's uh, apple story? So the apple story goes something to the effect of Isaac Newton was sitting under an apple tree and apple fell and hit him on the head and he had this eureka moment of I understand what gravity is, gravity is what pulled this apple down. That's probably not exactly the way it happened. What's more likely is that uh, he was able to take an example of an apple falling from a tree in an orchard and compared it to something that was not as obvious, such as the moon going around the earth. And those are the two big connections he made. He connected an apple falling to the moon falling around the earth. Uh, and he basically said that the moon goes around the earth for the same reason the apple falls gravity, that it's an attractive force between these objects. So let's look at number two now. There we go. All right, number two. So what is gravity really? So gravity is an attractive force between objects with mass. So what gravity actually is, is it's an attractive force between any objects that have mass. Okay, So that explains why um, free fall happens, because the object falling has mass, the Earth has mass, and therefore there's an attractive force between them. Um, we've talked about the mass of the Earth being really big, which is why you don't notice the Earth moving. So the other object appears to be moving uh, towards the Earth, even though technically they're moving towards each other. So number three, what is Newton's law of universal gravitation? In other words, uh, in words and with an equation. So the universal gravitation in words is force of gravity is directly... proportional to mass and inversely proportional to the distance squared. Now this mass is the mass of the objects that are being attracted to each other and this distance is the distance between those two objects. So if we're talking about the earth and the moon then the mass would be the mass of the earth and the mass of the moon and the distance would be uh, the distance between the earth and the moon. So the equation is this Fg equals big G times m1, m2, over d squared. Notice that big G is something new to us. We'll get there here in just a minute. But there's your equation. There's your definition. Okay, so what is the gravitational constant? Not just the number, what does it actually mean? So the number is 8.89 times 10 to the negative 11th. And we're not too worried about the units. The units will just get you confused. Um, there are units to it. It is an actual value. Uh, but 8.89 times 10 to the negative 11th is the value. So you can see right away it is not a very big number. Negative 11th is if you took one, if you took one divided by a billion, that number would still be bigger than this. So it's not a very big number. Okay, so what actually is it? It's a measure of how powerful... 
a force, gravity is. See, little g, the acceleration of gravity, and I should, I should put that this is big G so you know what to use in the equations. So little g, the acceleration of gravity, is 9.8. And that value only is specifically for what the acceleration of gravity is on Earth. If you go to different planets, it's different things. It's 1.67 on the moon. It's like 22 point something on Jupiter. It's only 9.8 on Earth. So that's not everywhere. That's just specifically here on Earth. Fg is the force of gravity on an object. That's only going to be true to that one specific object, whatever it is, um, dropping a rock or whatever. Big G is talking about everywhere in the universe, how strong of a force is gravity? How powerful is gravity? And the answer is not very. I can prove it to you. My daughter, who's one year old, can break gravity. She can stand up and she can jump. Not very high and not very well, and she'll usually fall over. But my one-year-old daughter can beat gravity. If my one-year-old daughter can beat gravity, it must not be a very powerful force. Um, my daughter cannot pull apart medium-strong magnets. She cannot pull medium-strength magnets apart. But she can beat gravity, which is caused by Earth, which is enormous. So it just goes to show that gravity is not near as strong of a force as we thought it was. All right, number five, what's the inverse square law? So the inverse square law is this part right here, this over d squared business. The inverse square law is this. It's 1 over d squared. So the force of gravity is proportional to 1 over d squared. It basically just says that things get smaller by the square of the distance. So for example, if I have something that's 1 square in size, if I go and double the distance, so here I am, okay, when I get some distance d away, it's this size. If I double that distance, it's not going to be double in size. It's going to be four times in size. That's the inverse square law, that things change by 1 over the distance squared. So let's say you take a dumbbell, which has a force of gravity on Earth of 400 newtons, out a distance that's twice as far from the Earth's center. So right now it's, it's some distance from the Earth's center. We're going to double that distance. What would its force of gravity be out there? So we went from a distance of 1 to a distance of 2. But the inverse square law says it's not 2. It's 2 squared. So it's actually 4. But it's the inverse, which means it's not 4 times bigger. It's 4 times smaller. So it's 400 divided by 4. It's 100 newtons. If you want to understand how the inverse square law works, if you were to go to double the distance from the Earth's center that you are right now, you would weigh one-fourth what you weigh currently. So if you weighed 120 pounds, you would only weigh 30 pounds when you got double the distance away from the Earth's surface. So it shows that as you get further away, it doubles, um, or it doesn't double, it squares whatever the distance is. All right. Last kind of big question before we talk about weightlessness. So does gravity only exist for heavy objects like planets? No. It exists for all objects. And we've proved this. Okay, I want you to look around the room. I want you to find another person, look at another person in the room. They can be sitting next to you. They can be on the other side of the room. It doesn't matter. But look at another person in the room. Okay? You are attracted to them. I know, I know, you didn't think you were attracted to them. But now that you look at it, you can really tell that you are attracted to them. Because they have mass. 
And gravity is an attractive force between objects with mass. You have mass, they have mass. There is an attractive force between objects with mass. So you are attracted to them. So why can't we tell? The reason we can't tell is because Earth is too big. Earth is too big for us to tell between smaller objects. But we've done labs where we've put objects and we've had them suspended and they have been attracted to each other even though they're very tiny and small. Um, all objects have an attractive force to each other. It does not matter how big or how small the objects are. Every object is attracted to every other object. All right. Nailed it. On to the back page. Okay. Two quick review questions here before we talk about what weightlessness is. So first of all, what is weight? So weight is the force of gravity on an object. And what determines how heavy you feel? That is normal force. What you're feeling pushing up against you as you sit in your chair. So, draw the normal force and the gravity forces on the kid in each picture. Okay, so, if a kid is under normal weight, they're going to have a force of gravity down and a normal force up. So, they're going to have a force of gravity down and a normal force up. And if your normal weight, your force of gravity and your normal force will be the exact same. If you accelerate up and you feel heavier, that's because the normal force is larger than what your weight down is. If you're accelerating down and you feel lighter, that's because the force of gravity is larger than the normal force up. So what would happen if you had zero weight, if you felt weightless? Take 10 seconds here. See if you can think about what would be happening in order to have zero weight. What would the normal force be? Well, it's equal to gravity if we're at rest. It's larger than gravity if we feel heavier. It's less than gravity if we feel lighter. So what happens if we feel weightless? It's zero. It's zero. So why do astronauts in the International Space Station feel weightless? They feel weightless because there is no normal force on them. In fact, there's no normal force because like this girl in this picture who's in free fall, the astronauts are in free fall. They're in free fall around the Earth. They're getting pulled down towards the Earth by gravity, but they have a tangential velocity forward. That tangential velocity forward pulls them forward as they go around the Earth. And so as they fall towards the Earth, they're falling around it. So being in space is actually the world's longest... Oh, man, totally didn't make those meet up. Oh, well. It's basically the world's longest skydive. If you're in space, you're skydiving, you just never hit the ground because you're going so fast forward that you basically fall towards the Earth at the same rate you fall around the Earth. That whole time, there's no normal force on you, and that's why you feel weightless. And so anything that is in free fall will be weightless. You don't have to be in space to feel weightless. You can feel weightless here right on Earth. And you're going to answer a question about that next. See you. Have a great day.